take the time to uh, take down any praise reports, any prayer requests. We know we have some who are traveling out of town and uh, just pray for them, uh, their safety. Um, there's a lot of illness that's still going around right now. It seems like there's been an uptick in the COVID again is what I'm saying. So we want to uh, be prayerful of, of that and um, understand there's a lot of things like that and uh, taking place still. So uh, take care of yourself, your health, do everything you can and uh, Brother Donald, did, were you able to get all of those things taken care of on the house? I still got it. Can't you leave your blood in Okay. Yeah. I still touch the water up at night. Okay. So it's not as bad, but it's getting, yeah, how much more would it take to get it done? There's a more blue on it in the morning. That don't do nothing to go get another water. Okay. I'm going to be praying for that one. Uh, pray for my auntie. How's she doing? She had passed away. She did. Okay. Any others while we're going to the prayer request? We still want to remember um, um, my wife's grandmother in, in prayer, uh, her health. Um, there are a lot of uh, health needs and uh, prayer requests there. Um, while I'm thinking about it, there was uh, in the news um, off the Louisiana coast a uh, helicopter crash. And I'm not sure how many are missing, but there men that were working offshore and missing. And, uh, that's loved ones and families that are uh, grieving right now, hoping and praying that their, their uh, dad, husband is, is surviving right now. So I haven't heard any of the updates or details as of yet. So continue to pray for those families, those who are uh, lost at sea at this time and pray for safety. Uh, pray the Lord to get them home safely and uh, uh, comfort those family members as well. Pray for our nation. Uh, pray for our church. There's a lot happening. We're entering a, a new year, and we want to see God do some uh, some things here, and we want to see God work through us, and uh, see God uh, magnified and exalted and glorified. Just pray that God continues to do that. Pray for our vehicle as well. We thought we were going to have that last week, and then we thought we were going to have it today, and 
um, all the way to about 4.30, I'm sitting there waiting on a phone call and um, nothing. So we, we got the engine repaired, um, uh, rebuilt basically, the engine has been rebuilt, um, but we're having issues with the program. It had to be updated, so we had to send it all the way back, and send it back to the uh, people that make it, and then they sent it back to us, and mechanics been going back and forth. There's a lot of back and forth, and a lot of it's over my head. I just know that the vehicle won't crank right now. And uh, so we are crammed in my little car, and it teaches us to appreciate that big vehicle. And uh, I know that um, we got out uh, this evening, and we're all kind of stiff from riding in that car. So pray that uh, we can get that taken care of uh, quickly. Pray for the Lord willing to have it figured out tomorrow. We'll have it for Sunday. We need it. But, uh, the Lord knows, and I do appreciate what the church has done in helping me get in mind with here. Both vehicles down at the same time. Uh, you said, who would imagine? But I know God's in control of all of it, and I want to be sensitive to what God's doing. And, uh, God's teaching us something in it. God's using it to get uh, others aware of the gospel. And uh, if we're, we're not availing ourselves of that opportunity, then we're failing God. And uh, we want to take every opportunity we can to make sure others are hearing the gospel, even if it's not the most desirable and pleasant situation. Uh, God's in control of it, and we need to make sure that we're doing our part for our God who is in control. Um, pray for those, again, who are out of town. It was good to see some families uh, this, this past Sunday uh, that were here with us, and um, um, thank God we, we hadn't seen some of them in a while, and um, we just rejoice in the fact that they were able to be here for uh, Christmas Sunday, and uh, that was a special time. It was a little bit different, and uh, thank God for that. Uh, the opportunity that we have each and every service to worship him. We don't just remember the, the birth of our Savior on uh, Christmas Day or Christmas Sunday. Uh, every service, we're, we're thankful for our, our, our Savior coming to this world and uh, what he has done for us. Is there any other prayer requests? Any other, anything that I'm missing? We do want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our community. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hurting community. Uh, I'll say that. We desperately want to see God do a work in this area. And uh, it takes uh, God's people being faithful. And God is faithful. God will do his part. We've got to be willing to do our part and uh, go through with the part that God has given us to do. And uh, we plant, we water, and God gives the increase. And we want God to give the increase and God to be glorified in it. If there's nothing else, um, Aiden, if you'll come up in just a minute, and we'll take the offering, and I will pray over some of these requests that we have. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Father, that we can be in your house tonight. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, and for what you uh, mean to us. Father, we're thankful for salvation. We're thankful for your love. God, we just pray that we can uh, be that, that lighthouse, that, that that people look at and they see and, and they have hope. Uh, we're in a, a, a generation that has lost hope and uh, it's seen, it's evident in their actions. Father, we, we want to be uh, the hope that they see, that they, they can have um, in you. Father, because you, we have hope in you. We were hopeless once. We didn't have hope, but Father, we found hope in you. And Father, we look for your soon return. And we serve expecting that you're coming again. Father, we, we anticipate greatly that day. And God, you're in full control. And you're well aware of situations and circumstances, and trials and tests that come our way. Father, I believe you use these things to help point the lost to you. Father, I pray that you help us to to do just that, not to get caught up in our situation, but to be caught up on you, not to be caught up on our trials and the circumstances of life. And, uh, Father, you told us it rains on the just and the unjust. Uh, Father, we can uh, show hope even in the rain. We can show hope in the trial. We can uh, show great hope that we have in you, no matter the, the situation or the the circumstances that surround us. Father, we know that there are more that be with us than 
uh, any storm or any trial or any affliction that can come our way. Uh, you said your grace is sufficient. Uh, that means that you're with us in the trial and the storm or uh, the sunny days or whatever it may be. Father, we're thankful for that. Thank you for uh, bringing us to the close of this year. Uh, Father, should you tarry um, entering us into the next year, Father, help us to be found even more faithful. Uh, help us to be uh, found greater soul winners. And Father, help us to, to, to be challenged to do more than what we've done this year. Uh, not to uh, get sidelined or sidetracked, Father, but to, to give it our all. To be all in and it be evident before you that we're fully surrendered and we've yielded everything to you. And we're looking for you to bless. God, I just pray that you have your will and your way in the services tonight. We pray for those who cannot be with us tonight, those who are traveling. Father, just keep them safe and place your head of protection about them. Father, let them know they're loved. And, uh, we look forward to seeing them, Lord willing, this Sunday. And Father, we just pray for those that uh, health issues, health needs. Father, you would just strengthen them. And Father, we want to pray for Brother Donald and his family, losing his aunt and then losing his neighbors like a dear brother to him. Uh, God, you're well aware of these things. And uh, it seems like we hear about a lot of people passing during the, the, the holiday season. And, uh, families are grieving. Families are, are suffering. And, Father, we just pray that you comfort them and, and use your church to comfort them and let them know they're loved and, and that there's peace uh, that passes all understanding in Christ Jesus. Be with us tonight. May you have your will and your way in the services. May you be honored and glorified in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and thank you. Amen. chapter 20. I'll read verse 6 as you find your places. I'm glad to see each and every one of you tonight. Thank God for you being here and your faithfulness to the work of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find a faithful man who can find. You know, I, I love how faithful God has been to us, but how faithful have we been to God? If we are to prosper, if we're to remain, we, we must remain faithful to God. If we're going to prosper, we've got to be faithful. If we want God to bless, then we've got to be fully surrendered. Uh, we have, this is kind of a conclusion of what we've been studying on Sunday nights. And uh, we didn't uh, have this past Sunday evening. And, uh, we will not have Sunday evening this Sunday coming. God uh, willing, we'll have Sunday, Sunday school, morning service, and we're going to get everybody home safely. Uh, with a lot of traveling, and I don't want us on the roads with a lot of what's, what we know is taking place uh, during this New Year time. Uh, we just pray that God keep us all safe during it and um, we do what we feel is best as God leads for our church. A faithful man who can find. Now, I want you to know there's some things that God won't reveal to us until we have fully revealed our 
faithfulness to him. It's one thing to say, I, I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm faithful. But your actions, we heard it said, your actions speak louder than words. Your actions uh, carry a whole lot more weight than uh, what you say with your mouth. Jesus said that they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Jesus didn't want lip service. He wanted their heart. Tonight, Jesus doesn't want lip service. He wants our heart. And when he has your heart, he has all of you. We're going to be looking at Abraham and Isaac, God willing, next Thursday. And boy, it's just, it's amazing how much of himself Abraham was willing to give. And if we're honest about it, quite often we're not willing to give like that. We're not willing to sacrifice. We're not willing to be that faithful, but that's what God's looking for. Number one, faithful in obedience to God. It is required as stewards, you find in 1 Corinthians, that a man be found faithful. God is looking for faithfulness. I've talked about make, um, making sure that we're not wavering in our faithfulness, faithful to the end, faithful during the trial, faithful uh, um, when they're about to cast you into the fires, making sure that you stand faithful. People won't always remember your words. Now, they'll remember your words, but they will remember your actions. They will remember what you do. Uh, it, it, it's important uh, what we do and how faithful we are. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. And we'll read from verse 1 there. 1 Timothy that chapter 3 and verse 1. Says, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre. He's not in this for money, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rules well in his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take, take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Now, we look at the faithfulness of the pastor. We expect our pastor to be faithful. You, you don't want to hear an ill report of your pastor. You don't want to hear bad things about your pastor. Nobody wants to hear that pastor's drunk. They don't want to hear that. That's not what uh, should be said of the pastor. Hey, it shouldn't be said of any of the members of Grace Bible Baptist Church either. It shouldn't be uh, said that we're coming out of a nightclub somewhere. There, God is looking for faithfulness. Are we faithful to, to church attendance? Are we faithful to study? Are we faithful to pray? Are we faithful to get in the, in the word of God, in the house of God? Are we faithful to soul winning? Before uh, a man is called to the ministry, he's got to have been found faithful. Before God sent Philip over to Gaza, he was found faithful in Samaria. God is looking for faithfulness, and God will use a faithful man, a faithful woman. God is looking for and expecting faithfulness of me. Now, we expect God to be faithful. <laughs> Imagine if God wasn't faithful, how we would behave. How do we behave now when God is faithful? But if God were not faithful to us, how would we behave? Well, it's important that we be found faithful. Proverbs 28 verse 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. You want blessings? Everybody's got these, uh, what is it, the New Year resolutions. 
Uh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a better job. I'm going to uh, get a better house or a working car or something. You know, we, we have these things that, that, we, uh, these, uh, that, we, that we plan to do in the new year. What about faithfulness to God? Where's that on the list? I'm going to read my Bible more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to talk to God more. I'm going to be in the house of God more. I'm going to do what I can for the, the work of the Lord more. I'm going to get more involved in my church. I'm get, going to get more involved in soul winning. I'm going to get more involved in making sure things are taken care of around the house of God. I, I, I want to be more involved in the work of the Lord. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be, re to be rich shall not be innocent. Some people are so busy chasing a dollar, they fail to be faithful to God. They don't have time for faithfulness because they're faithful to that dollar bill. They're faithful to their boss more than they're faithful to God. All of those things uh, should come secondary when it comes to God. Well, my boss, numerous times, I'll go and ask him, can I leave? I got to, uh, as, as a youth pastor, I, I got to preach tonight. I'm supposed to be preaching in the pulpit. You got enough people to take care of this? Can I go? And I've got a good boss. My boss is taking care of me. Time and time again. And then we moved our um, Wednesday service to Thursday to try to be a blessing to my boss, too. And others. I think that we enjoy a little bit more closer to the end of the week, the work week. But boy, we want our faithfulness to be primarily to God. If you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful on the job. If you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful in your marriage. If you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your parents. If you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful to witness. If you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful to read your Bible. Boy, this, this is what's important, that faithfulness to God. Psalms 31, 23, oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord, here it is, preserveth the faithful. You want blessings? You want preservation? We're going into the new year? I'll tell you, I want those things. Riding down that interstate, I want some blessings. Riding down the interstate, I want some preservation. I see the way some of the people drive out here. And uh, my wife sees how I drive. We need preservation on the interstates. And uh, I thank God that he's been preserving us. He has. But we must be faithful to obey, here it is, all of his word. All of his word. Faithful to obey every single word that God has given us. We must have a testimony before others and before God of faithfulness. And faithfulness in our obedience to God. Hey, I want you to know you're not called to be faithful to sin. God hasn't given us a liberty to sin. People... People feel like, well, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell, so let me just go do whatever I want to do. No, that's not what God's called you to. That's not who what God has uh, ordained you to be. That's not who we are. You see, you belong to the house of the family of God. There are certain things in my home, hey, we don't do that. Okay, the neighbor's kids do it, but not in this house. <laughs> you ever heard that before? Not in my house. That's not happening here. Hey, in God's house, there's some things that, hey, that shouldn't be. But we need to be faithful to God. Well, I, I, you know, I'm more faithful to this, and more faithful to that. and uh, that We understand why there's no preservation there. I see why the, you, the, the blessings aren't there. I've had people call me in tears and wonder why things aren't going their way. And it seems like God's blessing everybody else but them. Hey, when was the last time you read the Bible? Well, I mean, I... I just, I, I don't believe all that anymore. Well, um, you expect God to bless you, but you don't believe him. You expect the blessings of God, but you don't trust him. You expect the blessings of God for your lack of faithfulness to God. God is looking for faithfulness. And no, I don't pull punches with that because God's looking for faithfulness. And I will tell you in a heartbeat, hey, this may be why it's happening in your life. And it may not be because of sin. But if you're sitting here telling me, I don't read my Bible, I don't pray, buddy, you think this may be why it's happening right now. God's trying to get you on your knees to talk to him, to, to get where you need to be, humbled and, and, and honoring him and lifting him up. You've been too busy lifting yourself up and not lifting him up. 
We must be faithful to obey all of his word. We're not, we're not called to obey sin. Sin kills. Sin destroys. Well, I'm saying, yes, yeah, sin will still destroy your marriage. But I mean, I, I, I love the Lord, but sin will, uh, Satan had desire to sift you as weak, Peter. That's what, that's what sin will do to you. Satan has desire to sift you as weak. And the world will be sitting there telling you, it's okay. Everybody's doing it. But the um, Bible tells us, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. We're not of the world. It's not okay if God is against it. Well, I mean, you know, this is just the, uh, this is just status quo. Everybody's here. Everybody's on this level, not me. No. No, I'd rather lift God up in my life. How else am I going to be a light, a beacon of hope to someone else who is looking and desperate for hope in their life? 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What people get off track first in their life is in their thought life. They get to thinking wrong and next thing you know they're doing wrong. They're disobeying God and no longer faithful to the will and the mind of God. Our thoughts shouldn't be leading us into disobedience. There's some things that we can think and, and the Bible tells us cast it down. There's some thoughts that I've had and I've just had to kind of cast that down. Get that, that, no, not that right there. there there's thoughts um, that I've had today and I'm not going to get rid of that. <laughs> not that one there. That's, that's no, no. There's some things that just need to be cast out if you're going to be found faithful. I want to be found faithful. Psalms 10 and verse 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. In every aspect of our life, we should be thinking on God. Well, the vehicle broke down. God, why don't you let it happen? What, what are you showing me, God? What's, what's happening here? Both vehicles broke down. Okay, well, you got both eyes on this now. What's going on? Okay, this is happening in, in our life. Okay, Lord, well, what are you what are you revealing to me? Sensitive to the leading and the will of God. Well, I want to be sensitive to Him. And you need to be seeking after God and in everything you do, it needs to be centered and focused around God. When we come into the house of God, it's not just to come in and say, hey, I'm in the house of God. The pastor's going to preach a great message. No, that's not what we're here. No. God, I want to hear from you. God, I desire to hear from you. I, I'm, I'm coming into the house of God sensitive to what you have for me. Otherwise, you leave just like you can. Proverbs 15, 26 says, The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Proverbs 24, 9, The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Isaiah 55 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man, here it is, his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now, God wants to preserve. God wants to be merciful. God wants to bless. But what are you willing to do to be preserved? Are you willing to be faithful to God this year, coming? We don't follow the thought process of the world. We don't follow the conversation of the world. We don't follow the lifestyle of the world. We follow the word of God. We follow the, con the conversation of Almighty God. We follow the lifestyle that God has laid out for us to live. We're no longer under a yoke of bondage in sin. We're not, not under the bondage of sin. So, hey, here it is. You're without excuse. You have liberty to choose and obey and, and uh, follow the world or to follow God. Don't use that liberty that you have in Christ.
to behave foolishly. That's not why God called you for you to behave foolishly. He's called us to be faithful. Galatians 5, 13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. 1 Peter 2, 15 says, For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As for you, not using your liberty, you have liberty in Christ, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. You know the thing about a, a servant? They choose to serve. They choose to serve. They choose to obey. They choose to do as God has given them to do. When we obey God, it's a personal choice of faithfulness to God. You don't accidentally fall into the church. You don't accidentally fall into the Bible and read it. You don't accidentally fall to your knees and pray. You don't accidentally uh, avoid sin. Well, sin is coming at you uh, full charge. And you're intentional in your faithfulness and your service to God. You say, no, not here. Not today. Uh -uh. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, I'm here to serve God. I'm here to, to please God, to honor God, not to serve people or serve sin. Now, there will be people out there that try to deter you and dissuade you. Either you're going to follow the world or you're going to follow God. My Bible says we ought to obey God rather than men. They'll sit there and tell you, you need to put that Bible away. You need to stop preaching. You need to stop teaching. Uh, you just live like we do. Just get along with everybody. We ought to obey God rather than men. Be faithful in your relationship with God. It's more than just abstaining from sin. The need for abstinence is very real. And abstaining from sin, you, you draw closer to God. James 4 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Well, how do we draw nigh to God? How do we get closer to God? How? Well, being in church, hearing a, a message helps us to get closer to God. Reading in our own devotions, our personal time alone with God, uh, that's how we commune and get closer to God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So if I'm in agreement with God, I'm walking with him. I am agreeing with what he has to say. You, where you find many people walk no more with him was they had a disagreement with him. They had uh, something that uh, they didn't like about what he said. I am the bread of life. Who are you? Many walk no more with him. Multitudes have walked away from God. And many more will. But you don't have to be that one that walks away from God. You can be that one that says, I'm going to continue to serve God, I'm going to continue to live for God, I'm going to continue to draw closer and closer to God, I'm going to continue to look more and more like him and less and less like me. Psalm 73, 28 says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy words. Child of God, you'll never go wrong getting closer to God. But you're always going wrong, getting closer to the world. Well, you know, it's just this once. It's wrong. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do it again. It's just this once. It's wrong. You'll always be right getting closer to God, but you will always be absolutely wrong when you get away from God, when you go after the world. Get in God's word. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Just to hide it there? Just to hide God's word? No, that I might not sin against thee. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The word of Christ has to dwell in you richly. You know what you put in is what comes out. You know, there was a time when I knew all the stats on the football field. I could tell you who was a quarterback for what team. I could tell you how long he'd been playing. There were certain ones I could tell you how many concussions they had. 
there were certain ones. I knew the running backs and the, the, the entire offensive line. I knew the stats. I knew the teams. It was my life. I lived for football. That was my thing. But either you're going to draw them out of that or you're going to draw them out, draw them out of God. There ought to be a point in our life where we know more about God than we know about football. There ought to be a point in our life where we know more about God than we know about whatever that thing is that you can desire in your flesh. But we've got to put that thing down and lay that thing down, put it aside, and draw near to God. Get in God's word. Let Christ dwell in you richly. We see some um, someone who has an uh, eating a meal in a week or so, and he said, man, you need to eat. Here, come come eat. Here, we got a, we've got an abundance of food. Come and eat. Well, we look at Thanksgiving dinner, and there was so much food, but I, I can't eat anymore. I'm done. I, I've had too much already. We were eating richly, and that's physically. But how are we spiritually? When the, when the table is set, are we running to get what's been prepared for us? The table's been set, are we, Lord, what do you have for me today? When we wake up in the morning, are we, Lord, what do you have for me this morning? Lord, what do you have for me tonight? Our waking thought, before we, before we lie down for bed, we need to be thinking about God and talking to God, communing with God. Through the day, as things are happening, there's numerous times, and I don't go around broadcasting it, but there's numerous times where, Lord, I need you right now. <laughs> Situations today, God, I need you right now. Oh, Lord, uh, how, how do I handle this one right here? Lord, how do I handle this man? He's not returning the calls right now. I, I need this done right now. Lord, what is, what's going on? What are you, what I, Lord, would you help me? You see, you keep God out of it and other things get in. When you move God out of it, up, that leaves room for something else to get involved. And I don't want anything in it but God. One man called me this week and he said, um, and there was a little bit of back and forth trying to figure out what was going to happen with this vehicle. And, uh, the mechanic's telling me one thing and the mechanic's um, fussing at him, telling him this needs to be done. It's on y'all's end and rah, 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 rah. And it started to get heated. And I called the guy and said, hey, so um, what happens here? What, what, what do we do now? And the guy's telling me all his problems and what's happening over there. I'm thinking, I, I understand. you got a lot going on. I, I can appreciate that. But where does that leave me right now? And that conversation didn't end as well as I would have wanted it to. And he called me back. And he said this. Are you a pastor? Yes, sir, I am. I am, and uh, the entire conversation changed. So what just happened here? Now, had I gone off on him and just blew up and just acted a plumb fool and uh, didn't keep God in it at all, all of a sudden, it would have been not going to that church. It was a good reminder in that moment, hey, your testimony, son. I know you didn't say everything you were thinking on this, but uh, your testimony. Because people are watching this. They're very aware. And we had a very good conversation after that. In trying to get this thing done. The word of Christ needs to dwell in us richly. You talk to God often. You know, a, a husband and a wife in a genuine relationship, they talk. The brothers and sisters, they talk. That's that's that communion and fellowship and uh, you being drawn closer to each other and you, you're understanding what's happening in their life and they're understanding what's happening in your life and you can show your love and appreciation and your support for what's happening in their life and they can show it for you as well and boy you just grow closer and closer together. This bond cannot be broken. Why? You're communicating. Where's our communication with the Lord? Learn how to pray and seek the face of God. And many people act as if they're afraid to pray or maybe don't know how to pray. Lamentations 2.19 says, Arise, cry out in the night. 
In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Well, there's a lot of hunger tonight. And I'm talking spiritually. There's a, there's a famine in, in America for the gospel. We need to be praying and getting the gospel out to these people. Praying that God will make their ears sensitive to the truth of his word. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Sometimes we, we get to act like God's the problem. We get to act like God's word is the problem. No, God is the refuge. God is the hope. God is your sustenance. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it backwards when you feel like, well, God's uh, just making things difficult for me. No, God's trying to make things better for you. He's trying to preserve you and show you more mercy. His mercy is being new every morning. God's not here to, to see you fall, to see you uh, fall flat on your face, to see you fail. He's here morning to preserve you. He's got a purpose for you. Pour out your heart before him. Have a genuine relationship with God. And I'll say it this way. Have a genuine relationship with him before it ever gets bad. Some people, they wait until it gets so bad, then they say, Pastor, uh, uh, would you pray with me? Or, Have you been praying on this? Well, I, I, I need you to pray with me. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to pray. Well, let's, let's pray before things get bad. Let's, let's meet together and pray before it ever gets bad. We won't... To have a relationship with God, it's a whole lot easier to communicate. You know, a, a husband and wife can have a bad situation uh, take place and something they've got to deal with. And if they haven't been communicating, it's just that much more difficult to communicate when the thing comes up. But if they've been communicating all along, then it's easy. They, they can about finish each other's sentence because they know how each other feel about this thing. Boy, we need to have that open line of communication. Don't wait to the worst moments to try to communicate. Now, do communicate in those moments, please. Don't sit there and say, well, I wasn't communicating in the good times, so I'm not going to do it in the bad times. That's, that is not what I'm telling you. I want you to have that relationship started before the trials come. I want you to have that relationship with God, that open line of communication before the storms come. They're coming. We can't do anything about that. But it'll be so much sweeter as you go through the storm as you're in the ear of Jesus Christ. It'll be that much sweeter. It doesn't have to be all sorrow and woe is me and life is miserable. No, no, no. no. Um, you can look at it that way or you can say, boy, God has given me an opportunity to be faithful for such a time as this. For such a time as this, boy, we see the climate of America and all kinds of things taking place. And I told our teenagers, for such a time as this. Well, you look at racial tensions in America right now, for such a time as this. You're looking at uh, um, the rights of, uh, of uh, unborn children being fought uh, against and we're fighting for them. And uh, you're seeing a lot of things take place and for such a time as this. We can sit back and say, I can't believe this is happening and pout and walk away. And, or you can say, hey, thank you, Lord, for being with me and help us in this fight. Help us as we get through this thing. Help us. Uh, we're trusting you, God, to, to deliver us. I, I thank God I'm not having to depend on myself for my deliverance. I, I'm looking at the Lord. Oh, we're surrounded. Hey, there are more to be with us than be with them. Don't ever forget who God is. And if you have that relationship with him, they can say, you're just a lad. You're just a kid, David. David said, well, I've had my, my moments along with God. I've had the experience where the lion and the bear tried to attack, and I slew them both with God's help. And this giant is no different. Hey, when you have those experiences with God, you've built a relationship, and the storms don't look so bad. You want to know why? Because you're not looking at the storm. Your eyes are fixed on Jesus Christ. Your eyes are fixed on him. You remember the last storm he brought you through? 
You remember the last valley he brought you right on through that one? You remember the last test over here he brought you through that one? And you can say, yeah, I remember that experience. I remember how God brought me through that. Yeah, I remember that one over there was a little sketchy. I, I was trembling there for a minute, but God was faithful. And God brought me through. And you're sitting here looking at Goliath in your face right now, and you say, yeah, but my God is able. That's where I want to be. Don't wait till Goliath is standing in front of you and say, hey, wait a minute. I bypassed my lion and my bear. I ran when the lion and the bear came. Well, you probably run when Goliath comes. I want you to be faithful in our service to God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Yearn to win souls. This year we desire to win more and more souls for God. We desire to see more people saved. Proverbs 11 and 30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Hey, I want to be excited about knocking the door. I don't care what happened at the last door. They may have slammed the door in my face. They may have cursed me out as I was walking away from them, or they might have gotten saved. But I'm not taking what happened at the last door to this door. I'm wanting God to work at this door in this residence while I'm knocking it, praying, God, let this be the one. You'll be excited to tell others about Christ. You'll gladly tell friends and classmates about the Savior. For it's important that we carry the gospel message. You'll want to help care for your church. You'll want to be found faithful. Paul was able to leave Titus on an island called Crete because he was faithful to abstain from sin. Faithful in his relationship to God. He was dependable and in doing so, he was able to care for the church. You don't just send anybody just to care for the church. You're looking for faithfulness. We want to be found faithful. And last point, you will be surrendered. Isaiah 6 and verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. So you won't be waiting on God to use somebody else to do it. You won't be sitting on the back pew saying, oh, I sure hope brother so-and-so takes care of that. I sure hope sister so-and-so gets that over there. I know pastor wants to see this done right here, but I hope they get it. I, I don't feel like doing that right now. I know this is something that God would have us to do, but man, I sure hope somebody else gets that. No, you'll be surrendered and saying, Lord, given the opportunity, let me do it. Philip was serving the Lord long before the Lord sent him to the Ethiopian Union. The soul was saved, and many would follow as a result of that because Philip was willing to go. Who is God sending you to? Are you heeding the call? What's God asking of you this year? And you say, I can do that, no problem. I'll gladly do that. I'll go, I'll do that for the Lord. Or you're not surrendered. See, a fully surrendered person puts their thoughts aside, their feelings aside, personal agenda aside. A person that is fully surrendered is just that, fully surrendered. I had this thought as I was studying this message. Uh, you have two armies that are fighting them. The captain of one army says, we surrender. But in the background, he's got snipers still shooting. That's, that's not surrender, but that's not surrender. That's resistance. But I mean, I I surrender. I'm right here. You see, my hands are up in the air. Pew, pew. My hands are up. See, no, you you still got that shooting in the background. And because they're still shooting, we're still shooting. You're not surrendered. When we're fully surrendered, we're not on the attack. When we're fully surrendered, we're not on the defense. When we're fully surrendered, we're fully yielded to God. It doesn't matter how high God says to jump, we're ready to do it. 
Doesn't matter where God says for us to go, we're willing to go. Where do I want us to be this year coming? Fully surrendered and faithful to God. That's what I want of us. God will only bless faithfulness. That faithful steward gets the blessing, not the one that was unfaithful. So we close out this year. Thank God for this year. This was a year and opportunity to be faithful to God. But as we close it out, let's desire and strive to be faithful to Him and to His work that He's given us to do in this year coming and should He tarry in the years to follow. May this year of service and faithfulness be far better than any year so far. That's my desire. Not that we go backwards. Brother Donald, I want us to go forward. I want, I want us to be found even more faithful. God has blessed us with a lot. God has given us a lot. And I want to be found faithful with what God has given us. He hasn't given us a little bit here. He's given us a lot. And let's be found faithful to him. And that means being fully surrendered. Not my will, but thine be done. And if we're fully surrendered, God will reveal some things, as we'll see next week, that we would have never seen had we not been fully surrendered. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that we've been challenged in this new year coming. I pray that it's spoken to our hearts. Father, help us to be found faithful. Not just start the year well, but Father, finish it well. And as we look back this year, I'm sure we can see some points sometimes in our life where we say, man, I wish I hadn't said that, or I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I had done this differently. But God, you're in control. Help us to trust you. Not to dwell on the past, forgetting those things which are behind. Father, help us to press on. Help us to press toward the mark. Help us to be fully surrendered to pleasing you, loving you, serving you, honoring you, glorifying you. And Father, I, I don't think we can begin to comprehend what all you reveal to us if we're fully surrendered. Help us in Jesus' precious name we pray again.